Hey YouTube, I'm back with our video. Today we're going to be doing a video on DDR5 RAM, particularly four sticks of DDR5 because I've gotten a lot of comments and requests of people asking how do you do four sticks of memory. So, a couple of things. This video is going to cover single rank, four sticks of single rank. That means the maximum capacity is going to be 96 gigabytes of RAM. Currently in this setup, I have two 24 gigabyte DIMMs running at DDR5 8000. If you guys watched the live stream where we built this 9800X3D system, that is what we went with. So basically 48 gigs at 8000. That works pretty well with the X670E Aorus Master from Gigabyte. So I've been using this motherboard for over two years. I've been using 8000 speed on this motherboard for over a year now. The high speed like 8000, for example, is going to require a very high quality motherboard because the wire traces from the CPU's memory controller that go out to the memory sticks, the signal integrity on that has to be very, very good. Now, if you want to run four sticks of memory, the maximum speed is going to be around 6,000. That is what you're going to aim for. And in a lot of scenarios, especially if you're running dual rank, which we're not going to cover in this video, dual rank meaning 128 gigabytes or 192 gigabytes that's going to be very very hard to do at 6000 so if you're curious in that topic check out the video i did back in january it'll be linked in the card above for those of you that want to do that but we're going to go ahead and add a second kit of memory of these gskill trident z5s to this so we're going to run a total of four we're going to get into that here and show how to install it but first a word from our sponsor we often talk a lot about video game performance when comparing PC hardware on this channel, but are you thinking about what it would be like to program games to better take advantage of the hardware? That brings me to the sponsor of this video, Southern New Hampshire University, or SNHU. Southern New Hampshire University's online game development program gives you the knowledge and experience to create your own video games and help turn it into an actual career with opportunities for growth. You'll learn how to bring characters and environments to life with 2D and 3D modeling, texturing, and game physics how to create dynamic and challenging experiences developing game AI. The university program covers major programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java, all fundamental to game programming. The courses are taught by faculty with real world experience, so you'll have opportunities to connect and network with people in industry. The university also helps after graduation with the job hunt process. SNHU is accredited and has radically affordable tuition. SNHU was voted one of the country's most innovative universities by US News and World Report. Go to snhu.edu slash gtr, also linked in the description of this video, to see if you qualify for SNHU's game development program or to simply learn more. You might be eligible for financial aid or have previous college credits transfer over to fast track your degree at SNHU. Click the link to get started. Okay, once the computer is turned off and you have the power switch at the back switched to the off position or you've unplugged the power supply, what we're going to do is we're going to move these so that they're on the same channel. You don't want to mix different RAM sticks from different memory kits on the same channel. So the first memory slot that's empty right now, that's A1. The one that has this first memory stick is A2. Then we have B1 that's empty and then B2 which has the other stick. So I want both of these to either be on the B channel or I need to move them both to be on the A channel. So those are my silver memory sticks. We're going to be installing some black memory sticks which are rated for the exact same speed. These are identical, but because they were manufactured at different times, they might have micro differences from manufacturing. So we want to rule out any sort of differences there. We're going to get in here. I'm going to undo this one. I'm going to open up the first, the A1. I take this out. We're going to plug this over here. Okay, so now I have isolated my first kit, the silver kit, to channel A. So that will prevent any sort of weird things from happening when we install the second kit, because the second kit will be isolated to channel B. So now we're going to put these in. A lot of people try to do four sticks. What they do is they buy either two mismatched kits, or maybe it's the same kit, but they don't keep them isolated from each other. And that's why they run into problems with it not working. 
Okay, so that one's in, and now this one's going to go in. Now, tr the trade-off is we're not going to be able to run. Now, these all four of these sticks have an 8,000, an XMP 8,000 profile. Previously, I was running the two sticks at 8,000, but because we're now doing four sticks, we can no longer do 8,000, so we're going to have to manually set it to run at 6,000 instead. So now we can go ahead and press the power button. And there we go. The memory lights up. Code 15. Code 15, memory training. So now we just wait for it to train. The key thing, you have to be patient. You have to wait for it to train. This could take a couple of minutes to go through the procedure. There we go. It's coming up. 22B F3 4F This is why I have to have my debug so I know what's going on. I don't like the little blinking DRAM light on those cheaper motherboards. Okay, now it's doing the double take. What happened there was it was trying to load my 8000 profile that was on the two sticks, but it didn't work. So Gigabyte's like, hold on, this isn't going to work. We're going to go back to JDEC. So now it's going to do the training for JDEG. It's going to basically come up at 3600, which is what I expect to see. All right. Here we go. GPU lights on. That's good. We have our capture card as well. Looks like it's coming to life. All right, and we're in. But if we look here on the OLED monitor, the 32 inch monitor is showing BIOS has been reset. Please reconfigure your BIOS. So we're gonna press OK or press Enter on the keyboard. Now, the reason why it failed was because I didn't clear CMOS and was trying to load that 8000 profile that was meant for two sticks. That's not going to work. This is too much memory for 8000. So the best we're gonna be able to do is 6,000. We're going to enter the BIOS. Okay, so you guys can see right there we got all those sticks of memory and it looks like it's running at, like I said, 3,600. That is completely normal and that is expected behavior. So that shows that everything is working as intended. So what I want to do here, we're going to go to the expert mode, hit F2. In the advanced mode here, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to load the XMP because I know that's not going to work. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set the system memory multiplier to 60. Now, this is going to differ based off of what your motherboard is. So here it's saying it's trying to do 56, but it's I'm going to say 60. And then what I'm going to do... Leave the U-Clock on auto because I want it to try to go to gear one. The Infinity Fabric, I want to manually set this to 2 gigahertz. So it's one third of the 6,000. So that needs to manually be set. And then for VSOC, we're going to do 1.2 volts. I'm going to manually set that V-Core VSOC. So VSOC and then... Uh, VDDIO, ma'am, this can be 1.35, 1.35, VDD, 1.35, and then 1.35, we'll just go with all three of the same. Actually, well, let's, you know what, I'm going to do auto. I'm going to do auto for VDDIO. And then I want to set the primary timings. So in here, cast latency, I'm going to say 32. And then we're going to do, I'm going to base these numbers off of an, a 6000 Expo kit that I have. Because I know this is Hynix MDI, we're going to be using the free, the kit that you get from Micro Center. If you buy the bundle, they give you this RAM for free. This is DDR5 G-Skill Flare X with Expo running at 6000. 
So the primary time is in this are 32, 38, 38. And for TRAS, it's going to be 96. Okay, so 32, 38, 38, 96. Those are the primary timings. Everything else, leave it on auto. So we're going to back out of here. We're going to back out of there. And that's all we need to do. We don't. We shouldn't have to adjust the bus timing, the proct ODT, because we're not running dual rank. So this should be fairly straightforward and fairly easy to do. So now we're going to hit F10. See, it's going to show what we're going to do. We're going to manually do all of this stuff. And do you want to save and confirm? Yes. If you're going to run dual rank, meaning if you're trying to do 128, or 192 this can work but you have to manually adjust the proc ODT and you're gonna be you're gonna be looking at code 15 a lot like you're gonna be waiting on code 15 for a long time several minutes this will take several minutes DDR5 memory takes longer to initialize than oh there we go because this is single rank you don't have to wait super long so that's good I don't know why the pump makes this weird sound when the computer is on its side, but I don't know if that I don't know if the microphone's picking that up. It's gonna beep. There we go. And we are in. Okay, so now that we're back in Windows, I want to show you guys kind of what it looks like here. So this is the CPU, the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, 8 core processor. And we are running 96 gigabytes of memory at 6,000. There's the speed down there in Task Manager. And we are using four out of four DIMMs. So we are running four sticks of memory. And you can see here are the Zen timings that Gigabytes BIOS selected for the sub timings based off of the primary timings that I inputted in. So CL 32, 38, 38, and 96. And I manually set VSOC to 1.2 volts because we don't really need to run any higher than that for this particular CPU. You can leave this on auto if you don't know what this needs to be. In fact, you could probably leave all the voltages on auto and it'll probably be fine. So it, it selected these impedance values. And if you want to verify in hardware info, because sometimes Zen timings with these newer... BIOSes, it's not reporting the some of the values accurately, but in this case, I believe these are accurate. You can use Hardware Info 64 because this is a much more robust application at showcasing the actual speeds. So we can see here we are running the VSOC at 1.18 volts, so it's roughly almost 1.2 volts, and our looks like miscellaneous is 1.1 which I believe it lines up with VDDIO. Yeah, so the B-Core SOC is 1.2 and miscellaneous 1.1. Okay, so it does look like it did actually select a really low VDDIO of like 1.1 because I decided to leave that at auto. So we'll see if that's stable. Uh, otherwise, this would probably need to run at a higher value, probably closer to like 1.3 or 1.34 or something like that. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. That's how you get four sticks of memory running on a new Ryzen 9800X3D. I feel like this is probably more relevant for those of you that are on a 16-core CPU because an 8-core CPU for productivity doesn't really need 96 gigabytes of memory. Uh, you could do the exact same thing with four 16-gigabyte DIMMs for a total of 64 if you really just want to... If you really are someone who's just looking for the four sticks of memory for the aesthetic more than anything else, and you're willing to run this RAM at 6,000 instead of 8,000, then this is a good way to go. So you can either, so the good news is you can do 64 gigabytes or 96 gigabytes at 6,000. These are single rank DIMMs fairly easily with the 9800X3D, provided you have a good motherboard. So that's probably going to be the most important factor here. For what we're trying to do here so anyway guys that's it for this video let me know what you guys think in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next one thanks